This is The Scene on BBC Radio London with Ori Styler. This is The Scene. Feels like summer, childish Gambino. My name is Ori Styler. This is BBC Radio London, The Scene. I've got my first guest in the building. It's not even my guest. This is my boy, my brother, my broski, my comedy family. What's going on, Travis J? What's happening, Ori? What's I'm good, cool, bro? Sir. I'm good. What are you saying? You I'm good? all right, fam. I'm all right, man. I made it here. I survived the onslaught of the uh, flying ants. Is it really that bad out there? Bro, it's mad. It's <laughs> mad. And the thing is, they're bigger than normal now. Like, they, yeah. yeah, they're not what we remember. They've evolved. Some protein shaking. Yeah, they're on the steroid stuff. It's nuts, bro. <laughs> Ah. It's mad. So Travis, I mean, right in here, right, I, it's weird. I'm interviewing a guy that I talk to on a regular basis. You know that? Like, it's like, I can't, so what do you do? We're that, broadcasting well, the phone call right now. This basically. is what I'm saying. <laughs> like, so I, I can say this. Travis J, stand-up comedian, um, is is also going to Ed, sorry, Edinburgh this year uh, for his debut in Edinburgh, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. I'm telling you, it's great to see that happening. Fam. And the thing is, your show is solid. <laughs> Solid. Tell us about the show, bro. Bro, this this show right here is my baby, man. I've been crafting it for the last year and a half mm-hmm. and making my debut at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. My show is titled Funny, Petty, Cool. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a crash course introduction to me, man. I really bring the audience into my world of this show and... I can't wait for people to see it. Nice, nice. Why the petty bit, bruv? Petty, bruv, listen, I'm petty, man. Like, <laughs> you know what it is? It's not one of those traits that you brag about. But I'm just like, you know what? I am who I am now. Do you know what I'm saying? You know when you hit a point in your life where you're like, you know what? And you just accept me. This is it. The assets and the liabilities, they're all here on the table and I love all of them. Fair enough. And petty is an asset. Okay. All right. I got the funny and cool. There's one thing we all, all used to co- uh, call you is Mr. Composure. Hey. Mr. Composure. This is so the, fu- <laughs> the funny bit. We know you're a comedian. The cool bit because you are Mr. Composure. This is mm-hmm. a guy that, um, let's just say, for example, well back in the day, a girl would like to get your attention in a club and so on and try to walk past you a few bits. And you're looking at her saying, all right, I see you, but <laughs> I don't really see you. She don't know that you... <laughs> That's you. You're that guy. You're that guy that is... So she could be on the floor dehydrating, waiting for you to buy her a drink. And you're like, well, babe, whoever you came here with probably has that money to get you that water. Let him take care of that. Exactly. You're Mr. Composure. It sounds like I'm, that's kind of a cross between Mr. Petty and Mr. Composure. But nonetheless, that's the character you I'm are. I'm just saying I, I move to the beat of my own drum. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I will not be moved. I will not be excited by random situations. That's good. I'm doing that's it on good. my rhythm. That's good. And also, uh, you're a boxing fanatic too. Not even just a fanatic. You are also someone who's been in the ring and boxed to a couple yeah. guys. Yeah, bro. Tell us about that. Listen, do you know what it is? Yeah, my, my relationship with boxing started in a... Re- well, to be honest, I've grown up like being a big supporter of boxing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? My family, my dad, my granddad, we always just sit around and watch the big fights. But like, I've always... I remember like I was like 10 years old, I said to my dad, I was like, one day... I want to walk, I want to experience what it's like to walk into the ring and have a boxing match. Okay. Like, wake up that morning and know I'm going to have a fight. Because in my head, I was just like, the only fights I've ever had have been in, in the playground, spontaneous situations. Yeah, you don't know that's coming. Yeah, you don't know it's coming. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes you lose and you shouldn't even have lost. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be like, let's, I would like to see what I'm made of in that scenario. And I was just like, you know what, this, this has been on my bucket list for a long time. Okay. I had a bit of a, a rough stage in life at that point. So I thought, you know what, I need to do something to wake my spirit up. And I signed up to for a white collar charity boxing match. Yeah, trained for four months, got in the ring, bruv, what an experience! I w- I don't know, man. Having a, taking a, a a fist, whether it's cushioned with a glove to your face, bruv, that's that's different, bruv. I don't know if I would volunteer myself to do that. Do you know, what? it's strangely addictive. Seriously, I'm telling you, man. Once you've experienced it, it's hard to just decide that that's the end. Okay. So I fully understand when fighters retire and it's like, all right. They're back and they're fully old. They're past it. They're slow, <laughs> but they're like, I still love I see this that with wrestlers. I see yeah. that with wrestlers as well. So. Yeah, listen, let them let re- let the Undertaker retire, bro. <laughs> Why well, they keep announcing new fights with my man, like him he, and Goldberg, bro? He don't know nothing else. That's the problem. This is he's been Undertaker for more than, of his life than he's been. Yeah, but Mark. like it's getting to the point. It's like Liam Neeson. Yeah. You know when you watch the movies, like Taker was cold, but now it's like you're visibly too old to sprint. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? What, you, is, is he? Because Tom Cruise? Nah, but I'm saying Liam Neeson. Oh, he he's looks got, he's visibly, got, yeah. Okay. He's got one mad stiff leg. So it's like, when he's <laughs> running after people, it's like, come on, man. But these cutscenes, you didn't catch him. You know you didn't catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So a man like him should maybe retire from it if he was Bro, really... Shut it down. Go be Vince McMahon. You understand? Yeah, but, even, but even Vince is training to look like he's a wrestler himself. 
Yeah, because Vince, but Vince is what seventy something now. Nah. Yeah, bro, it's man need to know when it's time to move on and age gracefully. Don't be the old guy still in the club wearing the, the new garments talking about. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It's gone. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. So for you and boxing, obviously you're young still, so you got time in you. You actually want to pursue this further or no? Is no, it just, no, 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 not as a career. So you, all right, not yeah. in a, not as a career, but maybe maybe continuous hobby because I mean another comedy brother of ours is Quincy, yeah. and I know he trains to box a lot as well. Think, and I see and I see him kind of align boxing and comedy together. 100%. I think I think there's a lot of life lessons in the boxing ring anyway. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, in life, you've got your goals. In the boxing ring, your goal is to win and okay. beat your opponent. Yeah? The obstacles that you face in life, they're actually in the ring. That He's your opponent. Those yeah. are the obstacles. So when you get hit in the face, bow, that's an obstacle. The difference is, like, one thing I've learned from boxing was composure, which is why I kind of take it to my personal life, is yeah. that you might get hit in the face. You can't react with rage because you get yourself knocked out and it would just be a mess. <laughs> you just have to be calm, yeah. assess why you got hit, and make sure you don't let that happen again. Okay. So that's like that's kind of how I like to process life. Do you see what I mean? So that's what I've taken from boxing and play. Kind of, it kind of comes with comedy as well. That's I mean, it's, it. it's a, it's a, it's almost like a fight between. Even though it's not a, you're, you're against the audience, you want them to roll with you. That's it. But you that's know it. that they're go, they're there going make me laugh, yeah. and you're there going I'm gonna hit you with these jokes. Listen. So I guess it's kind of kind of parallel though. And two. you know those nights where it's like the first comment that's gone out. He's had a rough one. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? He's come back in. He ain't smiling. <laughs> he's not trying to high five. He wants to leave the change room, basically. Yeah. So when you go out in that, when you know the audience is like that, you know you got to come out blazing because they think they can push man around. That- <laughs> Do you understand? You've got to come with the big guns because it's like, yeah. nah. Do you know what I mean? No disrespect to my man, but I'm not my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pushed him around, but just trust me, this is a whole, this is a balanced breakfast you're facing now. Great. <laughs> I like that, man. Tell me, man. Any difficult ones where you kind of lost the battle with the boxing, but when it comes to comedy? Well, with boxing? Or nah, no, with comedy, though. Comedy. When, you, when you've lost that fight. Yeah, comedy. Uh, yeah, I remember I had one at uh, Camden, Camden Centre, right? Okay. This is like six months into stand-up. Mm. I've been going 10 years now, so this is a way back, and this still is the worst one I've ever had. <laughs> six months in, I win a competition to get this gig. So I won a competition at uh, Cotton's Comedy Club, Okay. right? And the prize was perform at Camden Centre, and you'll be given your, your trophy there. So nice. I'm like, cool. Get on stage, bruv. It wasn't even like the jokes were dying and people were booing. It was just mad silence. That's even worse. Silence, bro. Because it means you don't even <laughs> want to give me a reaction of any kind. So I, I'm on stage, but I'm, I'm, I'm like resilient. So in my head, I'm like, listen, you didn't like that one? Next one, I'm going to get you on side. <laughs> Continuing through my set, bro. I've got to the end now. But I believe in this last joke so much. I'm thinking, I don't care if you haven't laughed all evening. It's coming now. <laughs> Bro, I get to this joke, bang the joke. Halfway through this joke, they start clapping. In my head, I'm thinking, finally. But then it's like, wait, this, this, there's no punchline. You lot are just making noise. They're clapping no. me off. They're trying to clap man off stage, bro. And the thing is, Camden set the holes, what, about eight, nine hundred? Bro, and the echo, when this thing is getting mad. Oh. So then, to make it worse, Robbie G comes out, gives me my... He, he, first of all, he does that speech. Comedy's hard, guys. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's ain't easy. I've you know had I mean? that speech a few times oh, and listen, felt it a couple times bad. as well. But then he gives me my trophy for yeah. winning the other competition. And they're like, why? Who did he beat? <laughs> Who did he beat for this trophy, bro? Bro, it was so mad. <laughs> so mad. I, that's a difficult one. I yeah. would not want to be in that position. We've all had that, though. Mine, yeah. I think mine was a store. Comedy store? Yeah, I did... Um, it was gone. So, but gone. They're, they're they're trying to get you off the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're if you're any later than eight acts down the line, they are looking for a reason to kick you off. I want to go Fact. home. Fact. I've seen too many new acts now. I've had alcohol in my system. Yeah. How am I gonna not like you? And then you come onto the stage. You're gone. I've seen people get gunged off before saying a word. Bro, I've seen. <laughs> this is the thing, and I feel it's like mad. I feel like this was like like underlying sexism when this happened. So there was a first lady on the night that walked on, and then she walked on and literally. There was two men who had the, the gongs or the lights, or whatever it was, gong, gong. And then as soon as she said her name, gong, third one. Wow. And I thought this crowd is not only evil. I, this is why- It's I, just deep. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I'm not gonna lie, as bad as that was, right? I looked at it and I said, you know what? Anyone who's not done well tonight, it doesn't reflect them as a bad comedian. Yeah, yeah, no right? facts. Which yeah. I needed to tell myself because I, because I was one of those people that got gonged off. A minute 34, I think it was. Okay. I said, scene, scene, okay, well. By all you lot, in it, because evidently you lot don't know comedy. You just wanted to kick me off the stage. You know what? Yeah, like the the store, the gong, like the gong show in the store. Yeah. People kind of like got it as like as a notorious show. Yeah. I, the, when I when I did it right, I just told myself, you know what? I've done shows where if it went sticky, I probably could get beat up afterwards. Like <laughs> you know when, the, bro, listen, I was in Luton. I did a show in Luton, and yeah. the brother said to me mid set, in in between, just interrupted me. Where are you from, bro? 
Ooh. How was this like? That's a that's a question you need to answer you know correctly. What? I tried to treat it like it was, ah, oh, thanks. You know what I mean, yeah, and yeah. he was like, no, nah, being be like real talk. I was just like, oh, yeah, Central London. You know what I mean? Oxford Street. <laughs> <laughs> I like, There's no gangs in Oxford Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get me, bro. What ends? Ends? No, nah, Central. In, in the middle. There's no end of this. I'm right in that circle. Tell in you. the middle. That's that was, a good. <laughs> I like that, but that's good. You can't, yeah. You, when people set you up like that at shows, you have to be very cautious because it can go left. Yes. It can go left. At least that you knew how to de- deal with that at the gong, bro. It's, it's the worst is when you come off afterwards. Like any show that you've done bad and then you've got people trying to tell you, the audience members trying to tell you that, you know, if you keep working hard, oh, you can get to a point Spare where... Spare actually... me your advice, bro. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They start telling you, listen, at the end of the day, it's hard, isn't it? Isn't it? Why, you, why, why, don't you, everyone. why don't you do some jokes about like going out? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or being broke. Oh, <laughs> like, they give, they don't try and write jokes for me, please. This is what I'm saying. Oh, man, I, it's, it's happened. It happens to everybody. I don't want... And there's not it's one true. comedian that is sitting, listening to this right now or ever sees this and goes, that's never happened to me. It's happened to everybody. If you yes, ain't man. failed yet, if you ain't had that person that's come up to you and asked you to take the picture of them and a comedian <laughs> they actually liked, then you don't know really what it's like to pick yourself up at a difficult they, situation. They come up to you. Your boy smashed it. They come up to your boy and be like, <laughs> Bro, you are hilarious. <laughs> then they turn to you and go, big up, man. Hey, the, wor- <laughs> no, the, the worst is when they ask you to take the picture and you and you take the camera and they go, wait, where have I seen you before? <sighs> About an hour ago on the stage, <laughs> bro. You don't remember? Oh, you was, oh yeah, you was that one, innit? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. The keep, silence. They just go, keep doing your thing, man. <laughs> hey, it's painful, man. It's painful. <laughs> so I've said boxing. I've also said comedy. Um, you've also done some acting as well. Yeah, man. Uh, let's talk about TJ the Barber. That's first I want to go with uh, with Brothers With No Game. Yeah, yeah. Which See, the title kind of kind of gives away what the context of the that show was is. A, that was a fun show. Like, I remember like, so they put, they did the first episode. I remember mm. just literally DMing one of the producers and saying, yo, I want to be involved in this. Yeah. So they were like, yo, we're filming a barbershop scene. Come down and be one of the barbers. So I get down there and there's supposed to be a few other barbers and they all swear if they didn't come. Mm. So I'm there now and they've like, the whole scenes that I've done with them all improv. Mm. So we're just vibing on the set. Like I've bantered with the actors beforehand. The minute we get that banter, bro, turn on the cameras. Let's let's make some magic. Yeah. So yeah, I had a whole lot of fun on that. Like with that series, man. I really, I really enjoyed that whole experience. It was wicked, man. Nice. And uh, for what I've seen, when you look back at the series, people that were involved, so many of them are onto much, like bigger and greater things. I mean, for tell real. us a few. I mean, you're obviously one of them. Yeah. Who yeah, else yeah. is there in there? Who else was in there? Oh, you got uh, David Avery. Yeah. Um. Oh man, it's a few of brothers. Man, I hate when I hate when names escape me because like I try not to say it. I don't want to say the wrong name, but like I see a few of these guys doing amazing things, man. And it's like even Lionheart was in there. Yeah, do you know what I mean? He's gone and done some amazing things, and it's 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 just nice to see Nadia J was in in that in one yeah. of the episodes. You see, what I'm saying Letitia Hector. Do you know what I mean? She's touring as you know with the Michael Jackson play yeah, at the yeah, moment. Yeah. Nadia J's doing amazing things. BBC as well. So it's 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 just nice to look back and see the faces all in one place, and it's mm. like right, everyone's gone in their own direction doing good things. Nah, it's been it's fantastic. I mean. Mm. Every, Everyone, so one thing I love to see is when I see people that we, you start somewhere or you you know it's doing something and it's 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 low key at that point, but then everyone's gone in different directions and they've grown in their own field. Facts. Um, I, I think I saw Letitia post up that yesterday mm. was the last day of the that the, the the last day of the tour she was doing for the Michael Jackson tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's gone onto something else. I think I can't remember what it is exactly. I'll okay. skip my mind. But just to see how far that went, I was in when I was in Dubai. She was out there in Dubai doing the show for the Michael Jackson's. And I'm I, I was just saying, yeah, I'm in the city. She goes, I'll put your name down for it. But unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to get to it. Yeah, yeah, Only yeah. because I had appointments that I had to go and do where it was at the wrong time. But it would, it's just a nut. It's amazing to know. That's what I mean. That you're doing this. We're out here doing that. And that's just, that's just amazing to see. It's just so inspiring. It's so inspiring. Like mm. I look at it and I'm just thinking to myself, like we all started out many years ago. Do you know what I mean? A lot of us been in the game before we were at our era is probably what last 10 years or mm. so like that. And so many faces have come in and it's like they people go quiet because you don't really see much on social media. Mm. And then one day they just hit you with a, I'm pleased to announce. And it's just like, <laughs> oh my days, like you're gone. Do you know what I mean? it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Wait, to you've see. had that. Inspiring. Now you've had that. And like there was one time, and I know this because the day that it was on, I was somewhere else doing another event and I wish I was there. You had that one time where you put up something where people were like, is that you, Travis? Uh, you got to perform not just once, but uh, more than once with uh, the don of comedy, Dave Chappelle. Bro. So let's talk about that. How did that come about? That was crazy. So um, right, let's take it back to the first time. Mm. So Dave Chappelle's over here doing a tour and he's doing a whole lot of dates at Royal Albert Hall, I believe. Yeah. And on the last day of the tour, he and, um, cause Kojo was warming up for them for that tour. Yeah. And he was just like, yo, I want to experience an underground comedy club. Like, can you arrange that? So 
like a couple of days afterwards, I get a message along with a few other comedians come down to backyard. Dave wants to do a night and have a sit down and chat with us. Yeah. Get there. Dave's actually hosting the night. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and it's like, he tells you to run in order. We're all there chilling with Dave Chappelle backstage. Big Dave, you know? Yeah. And you know the ones where you're around someone that's a legend and you're just trying not to say something awkward. Yeah, you try you're trying to, to be normal. normal. Yeah. It's like composure. That's bro. <laughs> Listen, composure was gone, bro. I'm standing there with my hero because I'm there trying to be like, make small talk. They're talking about Kanye West. I was like, bro, is he really like that? Bro, I'm just... <laughs> Really? Like, I asked him about Kanye West. It was it was all over the place, but I was just gassed. <laughs> then, like, I thought he was going to do, like, a little bit at the end, and yeah. a little talk. Because we found that he's hosting. Now I'm thinking, all right, so you're going to be on stage already telling jokes. Yeah. And then i got to come on after. Coming on after Dave Chappelle. It's, an, it's, 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 bruv, it's already, like, how? How do I do that? It's insane. But, like, I just thought, you know what? When I first started this stand-up journey, it's because I was a fan of Dave Chappelle. Like, I was... I used to watch him on YouTube before my basketball matches. Yeah. Just to get a nice little calm space of mind. So this was a long story and a personal one. So I'm mm. like, you know what? I'm grabbing this opportunity by the horns and I'm giving it my best 15 minutes I can muster. Bruv, everything just goes like a dream. He's coming to the stage after I've done my set. And you know when a man's like, he's, you can see he's been laughing. Yeah. Man comes with the man hug. He's like, yo, leans in my ear. He goes, yo, you killed it. <laughs> Bro, I walked off stage with the geekiest grin. Forget composure. <laughs> Teeth everywhere. Teeth I would, out. I'd feel the same way, bro. It was mad. So then, like, obviously, I did a little video for him at the end because I just yeah. wanted to document something. Man got in the camera and was like, he's amazing. Bro, could have cried right there and then. <laughs> Fast forward a few months later now, I see that he's announced the tour. Mm. So I'm just like, I remember chatting to my boy Easter on the phone and we were just like, yo, he should get you to open up. And I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to force it. Probably men don't remember me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, time's gone. Bro, I get the call the night before the gig from my manager you got the Dave Chappelle open spot. Where are you now? I wasn't even in London. I was in Norwich. I was like, I'll be there tomorrow, bro. And the thing is, they said to me, like, if you, you know, you do open the first night, we'll see how it goes for the next couple of nights. Yeah. Basically, if you're funny, you can keep it. Bro, I did the spot afterwards. The tour manager comes up to me. He's like, yo, are you free the next couple of nights? Yeah. Mm. Bro, the gas. Sitting mm. backstage. Let me tell you now, the last show, yeah? All the celebrities have come. Stormzy, Idris Elba, they're all there in the crowd. Yeah. So I come out, I, I'm not even really, I didn't know all of that was happening. Yeah. But the backstage, bruv, the people that show up at the backstage at a Dave Chappelle gig, that's like another story, bruv. De La Soul, just there, chilling. Wow. wow. Just vibing. DJ Massey will come to me. Hey, my dude, you funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at him, I'm thinking, oh, okay, big up. But I don't know who he is. Yeah. And the coach was there, he goes, you know who that is? He goes, just De La Soul. And I was like, I went back over to him. Yo, can I get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing, bro. It wow. Was nuts, bro. Wow. How does that... I mean, what... It, obviously, you got to have your own milestones, but surely that's got to be one oh, of them. Oh, bro, that was absolutely one How of them. How did that drive you after that? Afterwards, now, bro, listen, like, thing is, yeah, coming from our circuit, mm. we don't really get the, the, the recognition, the reviews, the platforms. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, for those moments to come out, like a, like a lightning bolt, bow, just entered into your career. You've performed with Dave Chappelle. Yeah. And for man to be respecting my craft, fam. Like, it was one of the ones where he didn't even come to, to watch me perform on the, on, on the nights of me supporting his tour. Yeah. I was chatting to him. I was like, yo, he goes, no, you got it. Just to say. You, you can handle that. You, you good. I seen you. You good. I was just like, so you, wait, you trust me? Just fair. <laughs> I've got your trust, bro. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm trying to keep it together, bro. Nah, your composure is well out the window, Listen, bro. Listen, bro. And the thing is with me, I'm good at blagging with the composure thing. Like, uh, so the last the last night, they wanted to take a picture on the stage, yeah? Yeah. So they're gathering. They got Stormzy, Idris, and everyone to kind of line up and take a group picture on the stage. Mm. So I'm standing at the side of the stage thinking, are they going to invite me to go on stage? <laughs> Even though I know I've performed, but are they going to... Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll just walk in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the tour manager's like, yo, yo, stay here, stay here. So I'm like, hmm, I'm in, I'm in the picture. <laughs> then Idris taps me and goes, mate, you were hilarious tonight. Bro, I kept it together, but then I turned to my sister and I just went... <laughs> <laughs> I was gassed. I was like, this night is now into dream territory. That's, That's it. it. That's that's it's it. Nuts. I'm done. Done. Listen, You've done. Hey, that's amazing, it bro. Is mad. Hey, firstly, tell him. Remind us again. Uh, well, firstly, your socials, and then also remind us again your show in Edinburgh. Talk. Tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, man. Again. So my show in Edinburgh. Funny, petty, cool. It's at the Mash House, Just a Tonic. Uh, in yeah, Mash House Rooms at Attics in Edinburgh. Um, my every day for the for the whole month of August from from the first to the twenty fifth, except the twelfth and the sixteenth mm. at two thirty five is my show. 
And uh, yeah, man, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Travis J E N T. That's Travis J A Y E N T. Follow me. All information for my shows are up there. Nice, and nice. Yeah, man. Oh, and www.travisj.co.uk. Also, any more previews in London to go before you go? No more there? previews. Previews, previews done. done. I'm shut down. Had my last one on Saturday in Wimbledon. That went great. And I'm like, cool, I'm ready to go now. Do you know what I mean? I'm treating this like a, like a boxing match. Do you know what I mean? When you get to that last fight week, I'm like, listen, there's no training that needs to be done now. I'm ready to fight. Let's just do it. Get this. me in the ring. Let's yeah. go. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis J right here <laughs> on the scene, BBC Radio London. You're not going anywhere. You're chilling for a bit with us. Is that cool? I'm oh. asking you. Oh, you're chatting to me? Yeah. Oh, are no. you, are you I'm going to chatting to all these. Nah, yeah, nah, I'm nah. chill. Yeah, you're chilling. Chill. All right, yeah, nice. Yeah. Travis ain't going nowhere. Make sure you get your texts. It's 8133. Start your text with the word London or you can tweet in at BBC Radio London. I'm going to get my next guest in just a bit. But before I do, how about we play some B.I.G. Mason Buffy?